turns out when you turn on the light, even in the middle of the day, it helps. Yeah, I think we like, I think we like. Okay, new shirt though. Hey there, Cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. With Nonfiction November fast approaching, it is time to share my pile of possibilities. If you're new to the channel, this might be a new term for you, and uh, do subscribe while you're here, but it's what I call my TBRs. Uh, to me, a TBR is rather strict, like you have to read from this list, only from this list, no deviation, must finish everything, and I'm a mood reader, and that doesn't sit very well, so I do piles of possibilities instead. This is a starting point, a whole bunch of books that I'm very interested in getting to, but I'm not saying I'll get to everything on the list. I'm not even saying everything that I read will be from this list. It's a starting point. Every year I choose three categories, a baker's dozen of books among them, and this year the categories are physical books, past, most anticipated reads, which I'll explain, and 2021 releases. So let's get right into it. Starting with physical books, we have Dead Center, behind the scenes at the world's largest medical examiner office by Shira Rabowski with Tom Scatman. This is a memoir concentrating on his time at the New York City Medical Examiner's Office, and he was there for 9-11, and they had a massive task ahead of them identifying all of the bodies and parts of bodies from that horrific event. And it starts off, I actually started reading this last year. I read the first chapter, enjoyed it, but put it down and for some reason didn't pick it back up. And it was super interesting because he talks about his Orthodox Jew Jewish upbringing and what that meant for his education and interesting things. I know I will devour this as soon as I start it and I'm looking forward to it. Then there's Voices from Chernobyl by Svetlana Alexievich, translated by Keith Gessen. And this is first person stories, narratives about what it was like around Chernobyl when the nuclear reactor melted down and I read Midnight in Chernobyl, actually it's back right there, that little bit of yellow there, uh, about a year and a half ago and I want to read this while that's still fairly fresh and I know this is going to be a bit of a gut punch, it's going to rip my heart out in parts I'm sure, but uh, it's supposed to be great. And the last physical book I have is part of a project I've been doing this year which is to read literary criticism of romance novels and I have one physical book left for that. It is A Natural History of Romance Novels by Pamela Regis. This one looks slightly academic. It looks at romances not only in what I'm interested in which is more the modern stuff from 1970 on. This goes back to Austin and other things so We'll see how this goes. It'll be interesting what holes it fills in my knowledge of the genre. The second category is past most anticipated reads. So every month I've been making a list of books that I'm looking forward to that are coming out and I haven't gotten to all of them yet and there's a bunch that I would really like to read and I don't want them to completely pass me by. So this is a list of those. First we have Disability, Visibility, First Person Stories from the 21st Century, edited by Alex Wong. And this is a collection, if you're going for that prompt in Nonfiction November this year, of essays all from people with disabilities and about their experiences and all kinds of things. This has gotten amazing reviews and I have not read enough books by disabled authors yet this year, so this is perfect. Then there's Feminist City, Claiming Space in a Man-Made World by Leslie Kern, and she's looking at cities, how they're designed, how they're put together, and how it's not a space that's made for women. Even if you think of something like bus schedules, they tend to have more buses when people are commuting for their nine to five jobs, which are, there's more men holding those. Women tend to take buses at off times, working off hours, picking up kids from childcare, whatever, and it's not designed for us. So th that's what this book is about. I was an urban planning major, it was a double major, but one of them was urban planning in university, so this is supremely interesting to me. If I want something a little shorter, there's Nothing Personal by James Baldwin. This is a single essay that I believe was out of print, and Beacon Press recently republished it, and they did it with a foreword and an afterword. And I haven't read much Baldwin, so I'm looking forward to that context and additional information to help me better synthesize, understand the work. And the last book in this category is Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire, Society, and the Meaning of Sex by Angela Chen. This is another one from Beacon Press and I have heard so many amazing reviews, especially from Own Voices reviewers, that I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't read this as soon as it came out 
but but that's what this category is for to write those wrongs and the last and largest category is for 2021 releases and there's a couple reasons i'm doing this number one i like new shiny books and number two i read for the book two prize every year and if you don't know what that is i will leave a link down below to my playlist of all my book two prize videos for the last year because i only judge nonfiction. so i like reading stuff that's eligible, see if I want to vote for it to go on the long list. And I, you know, if I'm really lucky, maybe some of these will end up in the prize and I'll have some of my reading done beforehand. The first book I think is a strong contender for the prize and it's The Disordered Cosmos, a journey into dark matter, space time, and dreams deferred by Chanda Prescott Weinstein. This is an engaging look at theoretical physics and I've heard so many good things about it and the jacket copy says that it's rooted in black feminist traditions. The author herself is black and I am here for all of this. I didn't realize it when I was putting this list together, but Beacon Press is winning the day, I think, because here's another one. Prisons Make Us Safer and 20 Other Myths About Mass Incarceration by Victoria Law. I have been reading a bunch about social justice this year, most recently about police and policing and abolition, and it's time for me to take that kind of sidestep into mass incarceration and this book one of the reasons i'm interested in it is it's written by a woman of color and it it's more conversational than academic which at this beginning step in my reading journey is something i need next is the power of voice by denise woods she's a hollywood voice coach and she helps actors make their voice sound more impactful when it needs to be more communicative taking care of common speech and voice issues and this is great for me because not only am i here on booktube talking to all of you all the time but i am a medical interpreter so my job is talking and if i can do that more effectively i'm here for it i'm also excited because i have this on audiobook and the author narrates it herself and i that's just gonna be the best way to soak in everything we're getting there only three books left to go next is trans medicine the emergence and practice of treating gender by Steph M. Schuster. This is a look at the history and current practice of using medicine in the case of trans folks with usually in gender affirming care. And I'm super curious about the history because like I said, I'm a medical interpreter. I may have a trans patient in the future. And because like here in Japan, trans patients can get care because they're diagnosed with a disorder, which is complicated. Next is a memoir, Off Mike, How a Kid from Basketball Crazy Indiana Became America's NHL Voice by Mike Doc Emmerich with Kevin Allen. I had to cut out like five minutes of me just gushing about Mike Emmerich because I, he's such an amazing play-by-play -play announcer and like he's won Emmy after Emmy for sports play-by-play -play broadcasting because really there is no one else like him. He was the team broadcaster for the New Jersey Devils for a really long time before moving up to national broadcasts. And what I love about the way he calls so much is, first of all, he uses a wide vocabulary. It's never boring listening to, listening to his plays. And every single time I watch one of the games he casts, I learn something. And I know a lot about hockey. I love hockey. And just to think that I learn something about the game every time is a masterful, wonderful thing. And he is a super, from all I can tell, a super incredibly nice guy on top of it. And yes, so I've also heard great things about the book. So this is all to say, definitely want to read Mike Emmerich's story. And I've saved a fun book for last, The Queen's English, note the apostrophe, the LGBTQIA plus dictionary of lingo and colloquial phrases by Chloe O. Davis. This is exactly what it says on the cover, a book of over 800 words and phrases that are coined and or used by the LGBTQIA plus community. And one of the reasons this caught my eye in the first place is because it is gorgeous. The pages are full color. I was able to see some spreads wonderfully put together graphically. This isn't academic. It's not a straight, you know, tiny print dictionary. There's lots of pictures and all kinds of graphic design elements to make everything come to life. And in addition to being educational, it also looks like a lot of fun. So I would love to read this. So there we have my pile of possibilities for nonfiction November. Be sure to subscribe if you're new so that you can watch me read these probably in vlogs as well as in my wrap ups. And if you would like to read any of these books, if you'd like to talk about any of these books, tell me what's on your own pile of possibilities down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.